Hi everybody, Peter of England. Today what I want to do is marry up the Section 68 Payer for Honour Supra Protest Drafts, Area 52 and Weir Bank. And the reason I want to do this and explain to you the, the mechanics of trust work um, is borne about by many people are not quite sure what the significance of a third party intervention and a trust account being offered as a means of payment for you actually means and the power and significance. So um, this has been a long project. It's been a project in the making since 2012. Uh, Weir Bank actually came into existence in an official capacity in 2014. And so over the past uh, eight or nine years, this has been an organically growing uh, movement to bring you to a point now. And the point now is where the financial and uh, banking cabal of the world, as predicted a long time ago, not only by me but by many other people who post on YouTube and on various blogs, have warned, there is this this potential, which is very real now, for the central bank digital currency to be put into effect very, very soon. And I would say it's going to come in sometime in 2024. Now, what that will mean for you is that your means of payment will drastically marginalize, shrink, and in, in principle, evaporate into nothingness. What it will mean is unless you have a QR code and a particular type of credit score on your phone, you will be limited as to what you can pay for and what you can't pay for. And that's not going to be in your hands because cash will no longer exist in any means other than uh, a minor ability to buy a chocolate bar or maybe to buy, um, a, a, I don't know, but minor things only. So you're being constricted and money has been weaponized against you. So with this in mind, Weir Bank was formed. Weir Bank had options for you. Weir Bank presented these options and these options are still ongoing because until, as they say, the fat lady sings, it isn't over. So we've uh, the next video that I'll probably do, I will do one on the uh, re-SDR. The, the bank notes that we are bank put in or I put into into place for you. Um, but the, the, the main thrust of the section 68 drafts of the payer for honor supra protest is a prime example of putting in your hand the the first and prime weapon for you to deliver to the judicial system and to the creditor who is a false creditor, therefore uh, could be called the creditor de son tort, the false creditor, um, that places in your hand a, uh, a notification in effect that, look, uh, I don't maybe understand all this fully myself, but there are people behind the scenes that understand this better than I. And what I'm doing is I'm presenting this means of payment, of discharge, to you and whether you realize it or not at the bank at the financial services organization the car loan company the credit card company it doesn't matter the people at the higher levels the higher levels within the banking and corporate financial structure and the senior members of the banking and political elite or cartels know full well that what exists is the following and that is a trust. A trust that has been put into place, which has been carefully constructed by the Venetian, Genovese, Florentine banking, double entry bookkeeping uh, cabal over many centuries to put, in together, uh, put together a, a, a trust. A trust that is operating in the background. And the best way to look at the trust is an instrument of, of inherited wealth. Yeah? Because the elite do not compromise, uh, don't, don't consist of even 1% of the, of the population historically on the planet. The 99% of which you are part and which your father and your grandparents were part of are the ones that have created the wealth. This wealth has been sucked away 
or partitioned or kept somewhere where you're not allowed to get it. So typically you would say in an equitable um, uh, uh, position in law, this is your inheritance. It is the common global inheritance of the people on the planet that have produced the wealth. Okay, so that's really putting it in, in perspective. So with that being in, in mind, the governments of the world, the banking cartels, particularly since 1944 after the Bretton Woods Agreement or the secret financial agreement within Bretton Woods, what that has been, uh, what they achieved there was to put in together another layer over the top to conceal this, this wealth from you. And what that meant was the countries of the world were in effect bankrupted and you were pledged as the surety, the underwriter, and the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the trustee to do the paying. So in effect, you were pledged as sweat equity for the governments of the world. And that, in a nutshell, is how it's working. Now, for those of you who have heard of the Sesui Key V Act, uh, 1666. If you go back to that time, and the, that was around the time of the Fire of London, or the Great Fire as it was called, from that point so many people were dispossessed of their property in the United Kingdom, uh, as the example, that most never were either found or relocated and never came forth to reclaim their property. So within the context of the ecclesiastical manoeuvrings of that legislation, people who did not come forward to reclaim their estate were deemed to have forfeit it, have lost it. And that, unfortunately, is where the great majority of you now reside. Dispossessed individuals who are presumed to be dead. So the Section 68 draft, along with the work that has been done proceeding by Weirbank has been leading you up to this point where we knew a conflict would take place and the banks were going to meet the people head on. That time is, is now. And if, unless you begin to do something about it, then what's going to happen is passively it's going to transit along and you are going to be totally subsumed into a, a, an assumed presumptive acceptance of everything that is not good. It's simple. So you've got to do something about it. And what I would suggest you do as a first point of call, as the uh, almost uh, nuclear headed arrow to put into the bow, to fire at the creditor, to say, to hell with this, my life has meaning, God damn it. I'm not gonna take it anymore. And this is what I'm going to show either in the court or on paper prior to any court appearance that there are things going on here that now I fully understand and need to be presented. And what that means, particularly for all of those who are about to have a car taken from them, the house taken from them, um, uh, ludicrous fines imposed for traffic camera violations placed upon them, it's you coming along and saying, this is how it's been engineered against me. And now I'm changing the parameters here. I'm divorcing from that system. I want access to my trust estate, my trust property. And if I can prove that there is a trust, I can prove that there is trust property. I can prove that there is an intention to create a trust, even though I can't see it, it's called an invisible trust. It doesn't mean there ain't any trust there. For example, any of you listening to this video now, I could have set up an invisible trust for you as a group or class of beneficiaries yesterday. And until a particular event arises, either through something happening to me or a qualification being met, for example, this YouTube video reaching 1 million views as confirmed on the YouTube channel. Until that thing happens, that contingency happens, nothing happens. But once that contingency is met, met the trustee, or if I'd passed over to the other side, the executor holding the letters of administration would go, yes, 
This criteria has been fulfilled, therefore now we get in touch with the beneficiaries and the payment happens or the benefits accrue. So that's really how it operates. So unless you're going to present to the Judicial Oversight Committee, typically a judge or a clerk in the court, the fact that now, hang on, I know there's a trust, I can prove that there's a trust, and there is a trust in my name evidenced by a certificate of live birth, a birth certificate, and a social security number, which acts as a pass-through trust. Once those things are in place, I can show to the judge and any people interested that there is a trust in operation and I am the beneficiary of it. So what we've got to do is we've got to get you sufficiently confident to one, put your paperwork together and secondly, if there is any appearance to be made because there is a repossession order being placed upon you for the repossession of your home, you've got to be able to role play at least a five minute argument in a court. Once you've done that, consider yourself free and clear to present the paperwork. Therefore, you never have to make another appearance in the court. <coughs> so hopefully I've explained the, the, the mechanics of this. The Section 68 draft, the nuclear headed arrow taken out of your quiver, fired at the creditor, is simply there for you to have the wake-up call or the, the prescience of mind to be able to address to the creditor that things have changed. And you know something they don't know. And just because they return it to you, just because they say, we don't accept this, it's not legal tender, we don't accept this form of payment, who cares what they say? It's nothing to do with them. Yeah? It's the people that make the decisions. In the old days, we used to say that the, the, the products that were led into the market were because the consumer wanted them. But that's not the case anymore. It's all techno-led, where the manufacturer is placing it in front of you and the cart is now firmly in front of the horses. So you, you can see that all this legislation the legislation on the transgender issue, the legis legislation on the internet, on pornography, on AI, on driving, on the congestion areas in the cities, the 15-minute cities that they're trying to lock you down into. All of that is open for change, isn't it? But nothing open for change as far as you coming along and saying we want to change the way we make our payments and we'll decide how we make the payments. We'll decide what's money, thank you very much. So if you think the craziness of the world is crazy, then don't let it stand at that. Why not us come together and change it for our benefit? After all, don't the politicians ask you every four to five years to vote for them? What is the point of the charade if you don't put anything meaningful in? And what we have now is a series of legislative initiatives which are nothing more than statutory instruments which don't have the force of Acts of Parliament, don't forget. They're not Acts of Parliament. They're just laid down in the, in the Commons for 28 to 60 days and if there are any objections or sufficient number of objections, they get a second or third reading. And if not, they're passed into law. And what you had through the COVID pandemic is you had the likes of Joe Biden and Trump and um, Boris Johnson and the politicians coming on the TV and telling you what the law was on Friday night to be put into place on Saturday morning. What type of democracy is that? So begin to see sense, see it for what it is, and now come together and do something. So the something is go to the Weir Bank website, look at the Section 68 drafts. The pain that is scheduled to be delivered to you by the financial and banking cartels is, hasn't even begun yet. So what I would suggest is you just begin with sending something to them 
that puts them on the back foot. It gives you a very solid argument and gives you your first port of call in the realization that now you can begin to call forward the benefits, the property as beneficial owner within your trust estate. And that's as much as I can offer. Send it to everybody. Press the notification bell if you like it. Peter of England saying thank you.